Hello, I'm Martin Delaney and today we're looking at techniques to help us finish off our session view tracks. Let's start by creating some variations in our program MIDI parts. You can use MIDI editing techniques and effects like beat repeat to add variety to program loops. Let's start with beat repeat, drag it from the browser to the percussion track. And then let's set the interval, actually let's set the gate first to a smaller value. 3 16th notes I think is good for us, just so it's not too obvious. I'm going to set the interval to 4 bars, so it only comes around with every 4 bar loop. We could also add some simple MIDI editing. Let's remove beat repeat from the kick drum track. We don't need that anymore. Then we're going to change the MIDI clip length to 4 bars. I should duplicate the notes. And all we're going to do for this one is zoom in near the end here and add one more kick drum hit. So even small single note edits like that can make a loop sound, well maybe more interesting as it were, but it can make it sound like it's going somewhere, especially if you add them immediately before a change in the song structure. Let's try and contain our volume levels a bit. When we launch our clips, you'll see some tracks are peaking with the meters going red. Also the yellow peak level indicator is lighting up. That means the track is too loud. We can use the limiter effect to try and contain these levels. There's a preset for this, the upper ceiling preset. It's designed to literally limit your track volumes. should affect the sound quality of your mix in any way. Let's try adding some reverb on a return track. Reverb is always a good way to add a little bit of space to your mixes. And if you put it on a return track, you can share one reverb sound across all of the tracks in your set. This is this is sonically useful and also saves CPU. Use Alt Command T to create a return track. Make sure you have return selected in the view menu. Sends also. Every time you create a return track, you get a send control as well. Then we add the reverb to the return track. Make sure the dry wet mix is at 100% and make sure quality is on high if it's not already. Then we can just use the same controls to mix in different amounts of reverb for each track. Usually people keep the kick and bass sounds a little dry than other instruments, but that depends on your personal taste and the genre you're working in. Now let's have a really fast look at compression and warming up our tracks. Let's try some of the kick because it's always easy to hear what's happening on that. Let's hear some presets from the library. So 
Sometimes a compressor will also have a limiting function, so you may not need a separate limiter and compressor. For this kick, if we use the drum the kick compressor preset, it doesn't really need a separate limiter as well. Live also has mastering and dynamics presets that you can experiment with. There's one called analog warmth in the mastering folder, which is a pretty good place to start. You can try that on almost any instrument track just to fatten it up a little bit. And if we open this one up, you'll see it's using a saturator, an EQ8, and a compressor in that order. My favourite software compressor though is not one that comes with live, it's PSP's Vintage Warmer. This is a compressor and limiter with a very warm analogue sound even if you deliberately overload it. I use it on pretty much every track in every song and quite often on the master track as well. <laughs> 